Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Coburg for Sunday, April the 25th. This morning is Mission Awareness Sunday, where we think about uh, the call that we have to go out into the world in a variety of different ways and to serve God and to serve God's people, God's children. So I hope that you find this service of worship helpful to you as you journey on your walk of faith. And I hope that you and your family and those that you love are keeping safe uh, during this time of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, and uh, thinking that there are brighter days and better days ahead of us as vaccines continue to roll out to the population. We come, let us worship God. And let us start with a call to worship. Jesus the Christ said, I am the good shepherd, and so we have come to follow him. We gather in the name of the one who leads us by still waters, and we've come to be restored by him. And we gather in the name of the one who prepares a banquet for us. And we've been come to fed by his love, so let us worship God together. Our first hymn this morning is The Church's One Foundation. good and loving shepherd, you nourish our lives and lead us into green pastures. You restore our souls with rest and peace. You give us true joy so our cup overflows with goodness. You walk with us through the darkest valleys, offering us courage and compassion. At all times, in all circumstances, you are with us, creator, redeemer, and guiding spirit. And so we praise you, Holy One, now and always. Patient God, your mercy is abundant and your love endless. Trusting in your mercy, we confess that often we have not shown your love to others, even though we claim it for ourselves. You have called us to compassion, but too often we are quick to judge others. We have been called to follow Jesus, yet we are distracted by our own plans and desires. Forgive us for falling short of your hopes for us, and renew a right spirit within us. And now we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I have two readings I'd like to share with you this morning. The first is Psalm 23, and I'll be reading from the King James translation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our next reading comes from John's Gospel. It's John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Years ago on the news program 60 Minutes, the singer Paul Simon said that not long after Simon and Garfunkel released the iconic song Mrs. Robinson with its refrain, Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? A nation turns its lonely eyes to you. DiMaggio himself contacted Simon to express bafflement as to what the line could possibly mean. After all, DiMaggio had not gone anywhere, why he was a spokesman for Mr. Coffee now. He had not yet, Simon told Ed Bradley, begun to think of himself as a metaphor. Great observation, but then, who does think of him or herself metaphorically? Wouldn't we wonder about a co-worker who was known regularly to spout lines like, I am the antibody that protects my family from the virus of secularism? Or, I am the oil that keeps our company's pistons well lubed. Who talks that way? Well, Jesus did. And as C.S. Lewis once observed, a man who spouts such lines as, I am the light, or I am the gate, or I am the good shepherd, is either the single most important person you might ever meet, or as a man as nuts as someone walking who walks around claiming to be a poached egg. So which one is it? Well, we recognize that Jesus is as the single most important person whom we might meet. Today, Jesus reminds us that he is the good shepherd. Now, agricultural references are frequent in the Gospels, and they reflect the reality of the time that Jesus walked the earth. In both readings today, Psalm 23 and in John's Gospel, we have images of the shepherd. And what comes with images of the shepherd is the relationship that the shepherd has with the flock. And the parallel that we draw here is the relationship that God has with us. It is abundantly clear that it is a relationship of love and care. Jesus tells us that he knows us, and he can identify each one of us in the same way that we can identify our own family and loved ones. The relationship is personal. But it isn't ours alone. Jesus tells us that there are others that also need to hear the good news. Jennifer Brooks writes, John directs his hearers to focus their worship on Jesus Christ, their only true guide. But he makes clear that the body of Christ is incomplete. There are many who have not yet come to the knowledge of Christ and therefore have not taken their place in the beloved community under the sovereignty of Christ. 
When we start thinking about who the other sheep are, it could lead to some questions of introspection. Perhaps we might ask, who are the Gentiles of our time? Because it's the other flock is the Gentiles that John refers to. So who are the Gentiles of our time? Or we might ask, who have we not fully welcomed? Or perhaps we might want to ask, can we be more welcoming? Not to say that we aren't welcoming, but could we be more welcoming? Jesus lets us know that we are called and loved by him, by the Good Shepherd. In the same breath, he lets us know that there are others, people we don't know, that Jesus invites to hear the good news. Our goal, our job even, if you will, is to find it within ourselves to make room for that to happen. We often identify ourselves as, as a church family. We can look around the sanctuary when we're able to gather in person and we can see our church family. And while it's a good and comforting image, it's also an exclusive image. It says we are set in our membership and can make it difficult for other people to penetrate and join the family. And sometimes we forget that our family has an uncle or a cousin that no one likes to mention, but who shows up for family functions from time to time and upsets the apple cart. We not, might not like it, but it is family. However, rather than identifying as a church family, I prefer to think of us as a community, a community of faith. And that community's membership is open and fluid. The concept of community allows us to situate ourselves within our own context, recognizing the geographic and social location of our community, of the particular challenges that face us directly as a community of faith, but also the broader issues that exist within our community and in our context that would be Cobra or Northumberland County or the province of Ontario, Canada. A large part of the work of the church is outreach and mission. Jesus instructs us to help the vulnerable and marginalized within our communities. And we do this well here at St. Andrews through advocacy and direct support. We do it well in Coburg and we also do it by supporting missions through Presbyterian World Service and development. This allows us to then have a global reach to impact in positive ways communities that are beyond our direct sphere of influence. Giving money and advocating is good. It does make a positive impact on people's lives. However, it is also the easy side of mission and outreach. We can and should feel good about the work that we are doing. Brooks argues even churches that are heavily involved in mission and outreach projects beyond their immediate borders are often hesitant to reach out to immediate neighbors and bring them fully into the fold. Too many arm's length or distant projects offer them the security of loving the neighbor without seeing the neighbor. And unfortunately, even when caring for neighbors involves giving access to food and clothing provided by the church, Inviting and including the recipients of their ministry as members of the congregation is all too often beyond their ability. It's a bit of a harsh criticism. We here at St. Andrews are good at directly ministering to people. Our soup kitchen has been running and directly impacting the lives of our neighbors, people in our community, for over 20 years. We are currently winding down a temporary warming room ministry that we've been running in partnership with Greenwood Coalition and the county, and that has benefited and impacted people's lives in a positive way this past winter and during this season of the COVID-19 pandemic when people can't go and gather the way they once did. We've directly touched and met our neighbors, those within our community who need help. We do this work gladly. Where we and others could perhaps work harder is on inviting people inside the doors. While COVID-19 currently makes that impossible, 
I wonder what it would look like if each of us spoke more often to our neighbors, those in our community, about the impact that the community of faith that we belong to has on the wider community that we live in. Would people be interested in what we are doing? Would they want to get involved? Might we have the courage to invite those who aren't like us, yet live beside us, into this community? Are we willing to overcome some of the issues that divide us, that throw up those barriers, such as race, class, gender, sexual orientation, even political affiliation? Can we overcome these divides and open our arms a little bit wider? On this Mission Awareness Sunday, we hear the voice of Jesus say, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Jesus reminds us. He says, I am the good shepherd. He speaks of himself as a metaphor, and yet we know it to be true. So let's look for opportunities to expand the flock, to widen our community of faith and enrich our own experience together. Amen. Let's come before God once again in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as a shepherd cares for the flock, so you care for each one of us. Move in our hearts and minds, our congregations and communities, and lead us to care for one another for the sake of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Today, we thank you for the gift of rest. We pray for all those who are tired from work or worry, especially in these days of pandemic. Grant peace to those who are worn out with anxiety or frustration, and rest for all those who are weary from the responsibilities of their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our God, we thank you for the gifts of truth and wisdom. We pray for those who cannot discern truth in the midst of conspiracy theories, and for all who suffer under authorities who distort reality for their own ends. Grant wisdom and common sense to all who must make decisions in these confusing days of competing arguments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of strength, we thank you for the ways you refresh our souls. We pray for those whose lives are burdened with poverty or with uncertainty about the future beyond the pandemic. We remember all who face any sort of trial or difficulty, those who are, who are sick, in pain, or facing death, and those who are bereaved by the loss of someone dear. For all these precious souls, by their source of healing and peace, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our shield and defender. We thank you for staying with us when we face danger or death. We pray for all those who live in fear, prisoners, exiles and refugees, victims of oppression, racism, and hatred. Those who know the threat of violence day after day. Be for them a steady companion and their source of courage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our provider, we thank you for all the ways you fill our cup to overflowing. Thank you for offering peace and calm in the midst of turmoil, for the return of happiness after times of strife, and for, insisting, for insight emerging after confusion and indecision. Help us recognize your redeeming gifts which guide us and give us hope. Show us how we can be part of your redeeming work unfolding in the world around us, and bless the ministries undertaken through the Presbyterian Church in Canada. Bless those who serve in challenging missions in Canada and around the world. Equip them to reach out in love and respect, together with local partners, to accomplish your will in Jesus' name. And now, in this time of silence, we lift to you our own prayers of concern. Loving God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for the invitation to come before you in prayer. And we bring these prayers before you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Good Shepherd. Amen. 
uh, closing hymn this morning is Abide With Me. shepherd walks with you through all of life's challenges God is with you Jesus walks beside us and remember that God is good our cup often overflows and we don't even realize it so go out into the world befriend those around you who are within our community widen your circle and allow others to hear the good news about the good shepherd now I pray that the grace, the love, and the mercy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest with and abide upon each of you on this day and forever. Amen. Go now in peace.